Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Sears, author of Mindfulness, Living Through Challenges and Enriching Your Life in This Moment. You know, there's a lot of talk about mindfulness lately, um, and it's one of those terms that's very simple. It just means awareness or paying attention. Um, but I think people get confused about what to do with that or how to practically apply that or what that really means. Um, so there's a lot of different ways of looking at mindfulness, but one that I find really practical, one aspect that I use a lot in my clinical practice especially, is to think of mindfulness as a tool for exposure therapy. So what we know about things like anxiety, for instance, is, is, a, is it's based on avoidance. You know, by definition, we don't want to feel anything related to anxiety. It's uncomfortable. We, we don't want to feel that. So anything that helps me in the short run lower my anxiety tends to be reinforced. We call this negative reinforcement. I'm getting rid of an unpleasant feeling, right? So what we know, of course, is that exposure therapy is the best treatment in this situation. If I just put myself there, uh, resist the temptation to avoid, the feelings themselves actually rise and fall. So one concrete way I find mindfulness to be really helpful is to use this awareness that comes from mindfulness training, mindfulness practice, to break apart our experiences into noticing our thoughts, noticing our emotional state, of course, and noticing our body sensations. So again, as I said, with anxiety, we don't want to feel it, of course. So when anxiety starts to rise, these things that we do to make it go down in the short run uh, end up reinforcing the cycle of avoidance. So even our thoughts start to become ways of helping us avoid anxiety. Now, as we know, this isn't a long-term cure by any means, but here's what happens, right? An anxiety feeling comes up. I don't want to feel that. So I start thinking. Um, and in fact, the content of the thoughts doesn't even matter, right? Thinking about what I should have said uh, in the past or what I'm going to say in the future or what happens tomorrow when I see this person again. All these different thoughts. While we're in our head, while we're thinking, we're actually not feeling the body sensations quite as much. So our perception of the anxiety goes down a little bit. I don't feel the anxiety as much because I'm in my head. Um, so one way we can use mindfulness is this awareness. Wow, I'm noticing, I'm thinking a lot. So instead of engaging and battling with the thoughts, I'm just noticing that there's a lot of thinking. I could shift my attention consciously, which is what mindfulness is about, to the actual body sensations. And what I'll find is, well, first of all, it's going to get worse. We call it that extinction burst, right? Uh, and I'll go back to thinking. But if I notice that's happening, bring it back again to the body sensations. You get that rise and fall. And I find clients really appreciate the analogy of a cold swimming pool, right? If you jump in a cold swimming pool uh, and you feel how cold it is, it got worse than you felt, you jump out of the water. But you know if you stay in the cold swimming pool, your body feels worse, levels off, and it passes. It's the very same with your body sensations. We can practice with mindfulness, among many other things. We can practice staying present with the body sensations related to something like anxiety. And we'll get that extinction burst, that leveling, and a passing away. And I've opened up my experience. And now I'm more flexible with my responses instead of only choosing avoidance.